Hey, he's coming up here. It looks like he has a special guest with him. <laughs> and you just never know. Uh, well, this performance seems kind of stiff. Slightly two-dimensional, but uh, that's not going to be the case here. Very long, I guarantee you never know what's fixing to come out of the beak of everyone's favorite parent and cowboy poet. Here's my buddy, Kenny Phipps. Thank you very much. Appreciate y'all coming out. Y'all don't like helium? I'm going to do a little bit of stuff. I've been kind of serious on some of this stuff. I'm going to get a little crazier tonight. My first book is called Rhymes and Times of a Parrothead Cowboy. For those of you who don't know what a parrothead is, it's a Margaritaville lifestyle, and I live in both worlds, the cowboy world and the Margaritaville world. My first one I'm going to do is called Surf's Up. Hurricane force winds blew an Oklahoma cowboy to Florida in 2004 a year. He found himself somewhere in the Keys and said, what the heck am I doing here? He had to buy sunglasses to cover his eyes because there's bikinis all around. He'd tip his hat and say, howdy, ma'am. But they never returned the sound. He laid on the beach under the blazing sun till the skin was red and sore. He couldn't take his eyes off those guys riding waves on a big old painted board. Heck, I could do that, he said to himself. I'd be an expert in a couple hours. Right now, I'm going to follow that bikini. The middle one is painted up like flowers. <laughs> but he got an early start on his project with a handsaw and rusty, and rusty fence and pliers. And he had one built by the time he ate lunch out of six two before his bailing wire. He rounded the edges with his fingers rasp and then painted barn red and yellow. But he'd had so many little umbrella drinks, he is far past what you'd call mellow. He paddled far out into the boiling sea. His new board was supporting him. When he found himself atop a 10-foot wave, he remembered he couldn't swim. As he raced along the top of the wave, asking forgiveness for all he'd done wrong, the waves crashed against rocks and coral and washed him short at the feet of a babe in a thong. He was battered, bloodied, and bruised, but he turned his eyes away from this once for easy to look at. She asked him if he needed medical attention. No, he said, looking out to see. But would you help me find my hat? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we have different things to contend with that my grandfather didn't have to. This is called Modern Day Cowboy. I'm a modern day cowboy, although that's not what I want to be. But let me show you some of the gadgets the boss thinks that I need. This antenna on my saddle horn, it's needed, part you say? For a thing called a GPS, when going home it shows me the way. Now it's supposed to keep me from getting lost, and how cool is that? We're lost here right now, because I don't know where my, antenna, my batteries are at. And his three-year-old colt I'm riding, he spooks at the little things. He breaks in two and bugs pretty hard. I forgot to turn off my mobile phone's ring. But I stayed on and he calmed down. I think someday a good horse he'll make. Oh crap, he's blowing up again. My page on vibrate sounds like a snake. And his handheld computer, it surely ain't worth a dime. The boss says I need to look up cattle prices. I traded for a hill roper for a mine. And if they all went off at the same time, may the Lord have mercy on me. Technology killed another cowboy is what the paper will say about me. Thank you. It's called www.com. <laughs> Last year, my kids took me into town, one of those giant electronic shops, to buy a gizmo they said it changed my life. It's a little plastic gadget they called a laptop. They were very excited as they talked about bites, gigs, and rams. I quit frog gigging years ago, and I don't own any sheep, I'm an old cow hen. But we bought the thing and took it home and found a place for it on my desk. Kids hooked it to the phone line and said we were going to the internet. They warned me about viruses and worms. I could infect my little box. I got plenty of penis on the wormer where you get the thing shot. They showed me how to type a question, how fast the answer could be found. And after they left, I thought to myself, I guess I'll try it for a round. So I got real cozy in my chair after pouring me into a tall, cool drink. In moments, I was on the World Wide Web. You know, it's pretty neat, I began to think. After checking cattle prices in Omaha and rodeo road, we saw some Cheyenne. Things started going horribly wrong. For now, I showed a naked lady laying on the sand. I gotta get her off my screen. If my wife finds her, there'll be no relief. 
I think there's a little man inside this box. He can be nice, but he can cause you a lot of grief. I know there's a little man inside that box. When I find him, I'm going to give him some hell. Because I've already checked six times a day, and they ain't yet delivered the mail. <laughs> I met a gentleman in Florida in 2004 or 5. They had eight hurricanes in Florida in 2004 and 5. Anybody know why? They deserve it. <laughs> but I met a gentleman and his wife in Florida, and they decided I needed some culture in class, so they sent me to a symphony. Guess how many of those I've been to? Oh, I got to tell one more thing. Does anybody know what blind whiskey is? Blind whiskey is where you, if you think you, if you drink enough of it, you think your wife can't see you. Well, today I was having some blind ice water. Because I, I made a proposal to Chloe. I don't know if y'all remember that or not. Did y'all see that? And she, she declined. But I forgot it was on the internet before I, my wife was watching. She said, Who's Chloe? I don't know, man. Tommy, you ready to go? Tommy's going to help me with Tim McGraw. He asked me to do this Tim McGraw deal, and I got to do that. <laughs> Tim, just stand over. Your turn's coming up, buddy. He gets a little impatient sometimes. He thinks he's a star. Okay, this is going to be called the night I shot Tim McGraw. The jury had been seated and the trial began soon. My lawyer said I'd be acquitted until later tomorrow by noon. The charges seemed to stem from a gun and negligence when it was shot. When, my judge, when the judge asked me how I plead, the charge of murder, I plead not. Well, here's where my alibi begins. My little buddy won a prize at the mall. And he came home with a big piece of cardboard with a life-size picture on it of Tim McGraw. Now, I'm not normally a spooky guy, but the news told us two convicts that were loose on the run. When we walked into our empty house that night, I carried my Colt 45 caliber gun. Got your gun? The house was dark as a witch's heart as we made our way down the hall. I turned the corner and there he was. Bam! We shot that cardboard Tim McGraw. <laughs> now, Judge, I'm not a violent man, and I promise I'll be no more trouble to the law. And tell Faith I meant her no harm when I shot her husband. Dan's been telling those stories to his wife all night long, and all yesterday and the day before, it's about to make me sick. So I guess I'm going to have to try to match him on one. But not quite. It's called Cowboy Mom. And the events that I'm telling you here are about 95% true. Weekend getaway for three sisters would surely do them good. Could I take care of the house and the kids? Of course I could and would. So I my wife, so I drove my wife with her bags packed with bikinis, books, and sunscreen. She had not been gone 20 miles when the youngest one began to scream. After trying cookies and pacifiers, I asked my five-year-old, "What do you think? Just go into the kitchen, Daddy, and get him a bottle of milk to drink." So since I was in the kitchen, I put the dishes in the washer with great care. But I used a soap designed for the sink, and 15 minutes later, there were soap sets everywhere. <laughs> Frantically, I started cleaning this bubbling, slippery mess, but the suds were at least three foot deep. Where's the baby? I, where's the baby was anybody's guess. And wiping up the last of the suds, I put the towels in the laundry bag. Now to change the baby's diaper? Oh my gosh, the sight and smell of it nearly made me gag. And after tying balls in my little girl's hair, one ponytail is always longer than the other. Daddy, that don't look right at all. Why can't you do it like my mother? And on the television set during the day, all in 50 channels, all I could find are tampon commercials and soap operas. I'm about to lose my mind. For men to be home with the kids upsets the universal balance I know now. I hope my wife has a good time. But get home soon, honey. I need to check my cows. Uh, I want to do one about my wife. If I can find it here real quick. This, this might be my last one. Uh, I'll try this one. If I were blind, 
If I were blind and could not see a thing, the sound of your voice would make my guitar dance like the first bird songs of spring. If I were blind and I could not see your face, I would save your sin that lingered from our last embrace. If I were blind and could not see your skin, I know that it was you as I felt the softness and beauty within. If I were blind, I wouldn't want to miss the feeling the taste of your sweet gentle kiss. But I'm not blind, and, I, and you keep me enchanted, and I promise I'll never take your sweet love for granted. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you.